Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. And I haven't done anything scrapbooky for a while, so I thought I would show you how to make this really cool um, background overlay using deli paper. And um, as you can see, it's uh, very light, and if I had pattern paper underneath, you'd be able to see a little bit of the pattern paper. I just have a little craft card stuck under there. Um, it's very easy to do, and um, I'm gonna show you how, and I bet you have all the stuff you need right at home to do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a piece of deli paper, and um, if you don't have deli paper, you might try, uh, maybe just like a thin typing paper or something that's a little bit translucent. I think tissue paper would be a little bit too thin for this. You could try parchment paper. Um, that would be a little bit thicker, but it would give you a very similar result for this technique. Um, first thing I'm going to do is um, just kind of flip it. I want to just make sure that I've got my kind of starburst where I want it. And then um, I'm using makeup sponges and acrylic paint to do a little stenciling. And so I'm just kind of pinching the makeup sponge in half and I'm just using craft acrylic paint, nothing fancy. And I'm just gonna sponge in some color. My color's starting to dry out. I probably should have got some, some fresh color in there. So you wanna do this all the way around. I'm running out of color here. So I'm just going to uh, do a few of these for you to see. Whoops, got that in the wrong color. Here we got some yellow. And, you know, just work your way around. I already have one done to the next step, so I'm just gonna kind of show you how to do a few of these and, and we'll move it right along since my paint is dry. I like deli paper, it's really fun and uh, you can always add more to it and um, stamp on it and do all sorts of really fun techniques But because it's more resilient than like tissue paper. So here, and just, just kind of go around till you've filled up of your spaces and I didn't have enough pink there but you can kind of see the effect that we're getting so then what you want to do is you'll end up with something like this all right I'm just going to quickly wipe off my stencil I got a scrap of deli paper that I've been using for all my cleaning and I think that when I'm all done I'll have a kind of an interesting background there so let me just wipe that off just so I don't get any of this acrylic paint on my stamps you don't have to be perfect just clean it off a little bit there all right and then after it's dry, which through the power of magical YouTubiness, it's dry here. And I'm gonna line this up again. There we go, pretty, pretty perfect match there. And then I am going to do some stamping right over, right through the little holes here. So first I've got a little um, polka dot stamp and I noticed that the clear stamps seem to work a little bit better for this. I think that's because they have more squish to them so they can um, kind of jump the gap from the thickness of the stencil down to the um, thinness of the paper. And if you do offset it a little bit like that, that would look cool too, but I'm just gonna line it up so it looks like the one that I've already done. And I'll start there you know, get a repeating pattern, either a repeating pattern that you can line up or a random pattern that it doesn't matter if you line it up or not. And I'm gonna go kind of quickly because I, you know, don't want you to have to wait around too long for this. And then if you get to a spot where you can't stamp without getting into other areas and just grab like a little piece of scrap typing paper and then you can just kind of make yourself an easy mask. Works out pretty well. You go around and do the polka dots on all of these sides. I always have scrap. I, I save like anytime somebody has scrap letterhead to give away, I take it and I just have the boxes of the stuff down here in my studio. And then when I need just something to cover my workspace or something to throw underneath something that I'm stamping on, it works great. And um, and it does it doesn't go in the trash, which is. The best thing and sometimes you'll end up with some cool backgrounds on that on that paper old book pages are great for that too if you happen to have um you know if somebody getting rid of books like my library gets rid of books um they'll ask me if i want to have them and it's very easy to get overrun with these uh cast offs but they're really they are really handy when you're doing projects like this to anything that you can um that you can use especially if it's stuff you, you know is probably going to end up in the trash you might as well give it another another use before it goes there. So we're stacking wood this morning. I needed a little crafty break. Not that I really did that much. I'm kind of a wuss. I get out there and as soon as I get a spider, a slug, or a bit of dirt on me, I'm pretty much done for the day. <laughs> Luckily my uh, my kids are not so wussy. They're, uh, they're definitely hardier folk than I. 
and I think for the yellow I'm gonna use this uh, now this is a rubber stamp but the reason it works well is because it's really bold this is one of the Tim Holtz um, rubber stamps I don't know the collection artistry or something I don't know the polka dots I believe is from my favorite things not 100% sure but I'm I think it is that's why I made a little note on the package that's what it was so let's hope I'm right I won it in a contest so I usually remember things I purchase a little bit better all right I'm gonna line that one up and I'm doing this I'm, I'm just repeating the same pattern in each square just to I don't know give it some continuity and you don't have to fill the whole thing in like that one I'm just doing one little bit and this is a great way to use some you know just basic designs that you might not have a use for or even some just random stamps that um, haven't seen ink yet like the butterfly I'm going to use in a minute that was uh, one I really liked it was one of those dollar stamps and the dollar stamps are also ones I don't really think about after it's like I, I it's cute and it's only a buck so I buy it and then it goes in my little um, storage binder and then I never think of it again I think it's because I didn't have to think about it too hard you know you don't think too much about a dollar purchase um, but then they just sit there and they don't get used I don't know if that's your in your case but in my case that happens quite a bit these butterflies in there see it's very cute but I don't think I'd ever used it and that one I didn't need to mask off because it's not that small there we go now I wanted something to kind of I'll show you what it looks like at the stage because I mean that's pretty cool you can stop here um, and you might want to if you really love the way that looks or maybe do a couple at a time so that you can um, you don't have to worry you can continue to experiment without worrying about ruining it and uh, I am working on a slightly padded surface just so you know so I'm not even worried about this ink being inked up really well I just want to put I want to get a random pattern on here and I have to push this one really down really well because it is a fairly detailed stamp and it is rubber so it's not gonna have that squish so I've got to press it down pretty hard to make it go through the stencil but I don't want to worry about any hard edges so that's why I'm not being too precise on my inking I'm pushing down really hard here you probably can't tell but giving my skitty arms a workout and maybe some over here I really like the look of layered stencils it's kind of a little um, trick I picked up from um, one of the ladies over at, at Impression Obsession demoing, she, they do these really cool layered backgrounds. Um, and I saw that at a stamp show every year for the past couple of years, and I just really, really think it's a cool technique. All right, so let's see what it looks like at this stage. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to put my stencil away, and I will wipe that ink off with a damp rag, because if I don't, if I use any spray inks on top, it will um, run on my next project. Okay, so I think I want to use, i got this big background here. This is a Tattered Angel stamp, and I got it many years ago, and I don't know if it's still available, because it seems like those big companies like that, like the more scrapbooky ones, discontinue everything, like, immediately. It's like they're only going to make so many of them, and then they're going to be discontinued, which is a shame. So I don't know if you can find these anymore. Maybe if you do a search online, these are, they're, um, I don't know what they're called. They're just, they're big stamps, but I think they might have had a, like, a clever little name, because all their things had, like, tattered screens, or they had, like, cutesy little names, so, um, I think I might have even seen them at, like, Frantic Stamper or something, so, you know, take a little internet start, search if you want. They weren't much. I think it was, like, eight bucks for, for these two really big ones that I'm gonna use, and they have some, they're really big. They're not the high-quality polymer, but they're still, they work good for this there and then I've got the other one that came in the set with this is this one right here you know you're getting a workout I'm getting a workout with this background <laughs> page because I'm getting out of breath it's like oh my gosh I got like a aerobic workout here practically just inking and squishing that stamp around how many crafts can you say that about all right now I'm just gonna use my I like these um curved mounts whenever I'm using a big background um, I like my mega mount from impression obsession and this uh, rocker block from Crafters Companion. The rocker blocks are cheaper, but they're not as big. So, like the Mega Mount has a full, has a little over six by six space, I think. So I've got a few stamps I can't fit on even this one. I've got to use my uh, my Mega Mount. All right, and then if you want, you can add some more text to it or not. You know, that's completely up to you. I think I like this. And then I was just kind of playing with some because I want a scrapbook eventually with this page. So I was thinking, well, I, I took a a piece of paper and I did some of that same stamping on that scrap of pattern paper and I put that there and I thought oh this doily would be kind of cute 
So sometimes I just kind of like to, to play around with the layout and see, you know, oh, I like that there, and then maybe that on there. But I feel like it needs a little something else. So I'm going to take that same blue there, but very sparingly, I'm going to add a little bit to the edge. And the ink that I used was Stampin' Up! Basic Black, uh, Basic Gray, which is waterproof. Um, at least the old formula was. I'm not sure if the new one is or not. Um, so I'm adding that, and I might use a little bit of that yellow spray that I used on the doily. So that's the other cool thing about this. A little bit, yeah, I get a little carried away. I like to add the spray. Um, the cool thing about this is that you can make your background page to match whatever you like, just like I did here. Um, now I think I'll take something I like to do too. If I have to blot something off, I'll take something else that I've, like this deli paper, it's so cheap. I don't have to worry about wasting it. I can just kind of press this on there and pick up some of the color, help it dry off. And um, I'm getting two backgrounds. Look how beachy that looks. That looks really like boardwalky beachy to me. So I'll be able to use that for something else. Maybe I'll make some matching washi tape to go with it um, because this has a very similar texture. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little, nice little break from stacking my wood today and having a little crafty play. I think we might go to the movies and see that um, Maleficent movie. Maybe a Disney movie I'll actually enjoy. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that out loud. It would make everybody mad. All right, so there we have it. A really fun, cute background using stamps and stencils. That was a Heidi Swap stencil, by the way, that I used. And, you know, make your things to match and have fun scrapbooking. I'm going to stick my card, my little camera card, right in my printer and just print. I'm not even going to edit anything. Um, I'm really loving my non-edited lifestyle. <laughs> Well, that's it. I've got nothing else to add to this. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.